The ancient Egyptians were one of the most remarkable cultures of the old world. In terms of art, architecture, and science, they were light years ahead of almost everybody else. So much so that modern day historians can't understand where their knowledge came from. Even now, there are many ancient Egyptian discoveries that historians and scientists struggle to rationalize. And you're going to see them in this video. As well as all of the other fields of expertise we've mentioned, the Egyptians were also ahead of all their peers when it came to arts and crafts. To prove it, here are 27 ancient regal statues of Sekhmet, the lion-faced ancient Egyptian goddess of war. The discoveries were made at the site of the Temple of Amenhotep III on the west bank of Luxor. Each of the statues is crafted from black granite. This is a difficult material to work with and must have been chosen with a specific reason in mind. Perhaps the reason was durability. It was a good choice if so, because the statues are still with us thousands of years later. Most of the sculptures are more than six feet tall, although there are a few smaller ones that show the goddess sitting on a throne holding the Egyptian symbol of life in her left hand. The temple is an enormous site spanning almost four million square feet. To put that in context, it's as big as 65 American football fields. Archaeologists think that it was mostly destroyed by an earthquake about 3,200 years ago. There's still plenty more excavation work to do at the temple, so more statues and other artifacts may yet be unearthed. We don't know how the Great Pyramid of Giza was built. It also turns out that we don't know what's inside it either. In 2017, a team of scientists identified and pinpointed an enormous hidden chamber inside the pyramid, which is known as the Pyramid of Khufu. The 100-foot-long void is large enough to stash an entire Boeing 747. This is the first significant discovery about the pyramid's interior since the 19th century. The chamber is directly above the Grand Gallery and positioned at the same angle. The void can clearly be seen on scans of the pyramid made using cutting-edge technology that tracks the movement of subatomic muon particles. But it doesn't appear to be connected to any tunnels or other points of entry. There may be something inside the void that was deliberately walled up when the structure was built some 4,500 years ago. But it's impossible to find out without breaking into it. Because of the severity of the damage that would be done to the pyramid by cutting it open, the Egyptian government has thus far refused to allow it to happen. Did the ancient Egyptians understand the basic principles of electric lighting? The answer to that question is almost certainly no. But even if we acknowledge that we could still use some answers about the Dendera relief, you'll find it below the Temple of Hathor in Dendera. Most people refer to the relief as the Dendera light, and it's easy to see why. The enormous objects held aloft by the human figures in these carvings really do look like giant light bulbs. They have what appear to be filaments in the middle of them, with wire-like shapes coming out of the end of the bulbs. To conspiracy theorists, this is yet another piece of evidence that the Egyptians had access to higher forms of technology and were even more ahead of their time than we already give them credit for. To Egyptologists, the carvings represent serpents being carried on lotus leaves. Logic tells us that the Egyptologists are more likely to be correct than the bulb theory believers. However, it's still a little odd that the same arrangements of serpents and lotus leaves don't appear on any other known ancient Egyptian carvings. One of the strangest ancient Egyptian discoveries in the world is no longer in Egypt. Instead, it's on display inside the National Museum of Antiquities in Leiden in the Netherlands, where it's been since 1828. The discovery in question is that of a 10-foot-long mummified crocodile within which the ancient Egyptians stuffed the equally mummified remains of a further 47 baby crocodiles. The big surprise with this discovery is that the workers at the museum weren't aware of the presence of 47 baby crocodiles until 2016. During that year, the crocodile was scanned with modern 3D imaging technology as part of an ongoing project, and the presence of the baby crocodiles was picked up. 
To make things even stranger, they also found a second, smaller adult crocodile inside the first one. The unusual mummy was created about 2,500 years ago. The best guess of historians is that it's a tribute to the Egyptian god Sobek, who was usually depicted with a human body but a crocodile head, quite what the creators of this somewhat macabre mummy hoped they'd gain from Sobek is unknown, but they must have put a lot of work into it. The site of Nabta Playa in Egypt is one of the most inhospitable places on Earth. It's a hot, dry desert that's barely capable of supporting life. That wasn't the case thousands of years ago when its distinctive and mysterious stone circle was built. If you thought Stonehenge in England was special, you might be surprised to find out that it has nothing on either the age or the complexity of the stones at Nabta Playa. When these stones were fixed into place 7,500 years ago, the area contained a lake and grasslands, providing tribes somewhere to feed their cows and settle for a while. It was likely these early settlers who put the stone circle together. It's one of the oldest known archaeoastronomical devices in the world. Its primary purpose is to mark the summer solstice, but it also reflects the arrangement of stars in the sky. Some astrophysicists believe that the arrangement of three stones at the foot of the circle is a representation of Orion's belt, with the remainder of the stones around the belt representing Orion as it would have looked thousands of years in the past. There are a few things that archaeologists in Egypt get more excited about than the discovery of a previously unknown king or queen. Such discoveries are less common now than they were a century ago, but they're still known to happen occasionally. As proof, let's look at the tomb of Queen Kantakawas III, which was discovered at the end of 2014. Before her tomb was found, Egyptologists and historians had no idea that any queen by that name had even existed. The queen's tomb was found in Abu Sir and is thought to be around 4,500 years old. It's possible that Kantakawas was the wife of the pharaoh Neferifri, but it's also possible that she was his mother. Her tomb was found within the pharaoh's funerary complex, so there's an undoubted connection between the two. Even though we can't say with certainty what the nature of the connection was, it's likely that this newly discovered queen was alive at the time the first pyramids in Egypt were built, which is still one of the biggest black spots in our understanding of Egyptian history. The more tombs like this we find, the closer we're likely getting to solving the mystery of the pyramids. You wouldn't necessarily expect to find early Christian iconography among the relics and ruins of ancient Egypt. So what are we to make of this discovery, which was made in Egypt in September 2020? Found in the ancient city of Oxyrhynchus, inside a tomb that's believed to belong to a writer or artist from the 6th century, it's an image that many people believe to be one of the earliest surviving depictions of Jesus Christ. The painting is badly faded, but has been offered some protection from the sun because it's covered with a thin layer of material. The picture is of a young man with curly hair, with his hands positioned as if he were offering a blessing. If it can be confirmed as a 6th century artifact, it would belong to the time of the first Christians and the Coptic period. The wall on which the painting was hung is covered in inscriptions which have not yet been translated. When they are, presuming such a thing is possible, they'll hopefully confirm that the picture genuinely is what it's believed to be. The tomb itself is badly damaged and eroded, with little more than a single chamber and some heavily weathered steps remaining so it's a near miracle that the painting was still around to be discovered at all. Here's an ancient Egyptian discovery that everyone should have heard of. It's the Rosetta Stone. Not only is the Rosetta Stone one of the most important Egyptian discoveries of all time, but it's also one of the most important discoveries in the history of archaeology. The inscriptions on this stone made it possible for us to understand the hieroglyphs of the ancient Egyptians and finally begin to get a handle on their culture. The stone was created by order of Ptolemy V in the year 196 BCE. Keen to declare himself the one true pharaoh of Egypt, 
he had a grand proclamation etched upon the stone in both Greek and hieroglyphic to ensure that everybody would be able to read it. By the time the stone was rediscovered in 1799, we already understood how to read ancient Greek script. Knowing that the message said the same thing in both languages meant that we could decode the Egyptian hieroglyphs by comparing them to the Greek text. This priceless, hugely important artifact can today be found in the British Museum. But there's an increasing feeling that it should be returned to Egypt. Having spares of important items is useful. You might have a spare wallet, a spare purse, a spare phone charger, or a spare tire for your car. How about a spare head? That idea sounds ridiculous, but it's one theory about why so many ancient Egyptian tombs contain sculptures of human heads, all of which have personalized features and are probably intended to resemble the appearance of the deceased person buried in the tomb. It's known that the ancient Egyptians believed that the dead would reanimate in the afterlife after they'd been buried. But it's possible that if the deceased person had suffered severe head trauma or lost their head, they'd need a new one to complete the reanimation process. 30 of the heads have been found so far, with the earliest dating back to the reign of Snefru in 2613 BCE. While the features are unique, the hair is always cropped close and traces of paint on some of the heads suggest they were painted a vivid shade of red. The traditions of the time meant that funerary statues were always placed above ground, so the placement of these so-called reserve heads far below the surface is unusual. The spare head idea is only a theory, but it's the best theory we have. If you fell in love and spent most of your life with your chosen partner, it's only natural that you'd wish to be buried side by side when you came to the end of your life. Apparently, the ancient Egyptians sometimes went a little further than that. In April 2019, archaeologists working through the ancient site of Quesna Cemetery found a 5,000-year-old limestone coffin within which two mummies were buried on top of each other. Space within the coffin was more than a little cramped, it's just six feet long and under two feet wide. Sadly, the mummies are in such poor condition that it's unlikely we'll ever discover much about either of the occupants of the stone sarcophagus. However, it's natural to assume that they had a romantic connection to each other. We've seen plenty of examples of Egyptian mummies being buried on top of each other in burial pits or other cemetery sites, but in all of those instances, each of the mummies had its own sarcophagus. These people were squeezed into the same burial vessel. It's possible that the burial was merely a way of saving money, but that seems unlikely. Here's another unusual Egyptian burial discovery. In 2013, archaeologists digging through a cemetery site in Akhetaten came across a pair of 3,300-year-old skeletons wearing copper alloy toe rings. This is the first and only time that rings of this kind have been discovered on or with the remains of ancient Egyptians. Experts are fairly sure that the rings would have been worn while these individuals were still alive rather than having been added while dressing the bodies for burial. What they're less sure of is whether the rings were worn purely for decorative reasons or whether their owners believed the objects to have magical powers. Scientists were able to identify that one of the individuals, a man who'd passed away at the age of around 40, had suffered a bad fracture to his foot and also a broken femur during his lifetime. It's possible that the ring was thought to be imbued with the power of healing. However, there was no sign of a similar injury on any other skeleton. We'd need to find more examples of toe rings on skeletons or mummies before we could develop any further theories, and so far, that hasn't happened. If you fancied yourself as a magician in Egypt in ancient times, you'd probably have carried around something like this so-called Handbook of Ritual Power. The 1,300-year-old collection of manuscripts, properly known as a codex, is all handwritten in the Coptic language and in an exceptionally delicate state. It took several years for researchers in Australia to scan and translate its contents, but they finished the job in late 2014. 
There's apparently no limit to the power of the spells and incantations contained within it. There are invocations designed to bring you success in love, success in business, or cures for any illness. If, for example, you want to enslave someone to you, you should repeat a magical formula while hammering two nails into that person's doorpost. Egypt was largely a Christian country during the 7th and 8th centuries, which is reflected by the repeated references to Jesus within the text. Elsewhere, though, there are references to an individual called Seth, who's described as both the living Christ and the third son of Adam and Eve. That probably identifies the Codex as the property of one of the small but devoted number of Seth worshippers who existed in Egypt during the early Christian centuries. Subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications and you will be the first to know when a new video comes out. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video.